So this video is on differentiation, uh, the process of differentiation. Um, I have another video that will look at the explanation of why we differentiate and how we apply that in different contexts. But this video just looks at uh, how you differentiate, what the actual method and process is. Okay, so first thing I want to draw your attention to is where we can go in the log tables to get some information on this. So page 25, uh, under calculus, we can go to the log tables, and this first one here is the, the important one for us with this video, okay? So we're going to take that down, and then I'm going to explain it in a lot more detail. So it's saying that if you have something, uh, say, an x term to a power, then when you differentiate it, it becomes this. So basically, when you have an x term and a power, to differentiate it, what you do is you bring down the power, keep your x, and then you take 1 away from that original power. All right, let's jump into uh, lots of examples here so we can really see this process at play. So let's say you had x cubed, and if we were to differentiate x cubed, Following our process that is here in the log tables on page 25, that's where I got that from, we bring down the power, 3, we keep our x, and then we do 3 take away 1. And so you see that simplifies to 3x squared, and that is the answer. Let's try another example. Let's say you had x to the power of 5. Pause the video and write down x to the power of 5 differentiated. So we bring down the power, keep our x, and then we do the power take away 1. And so that simplifies to 5x to the power of 4. And let's try x to the power of 6. Pause the video, write down the answer to this. And so that differentiated will be bring down the power 6, Keep the x, and then it'll be 6, take away 1. And so that simplifies to 6x to the power of 5. Okay, so let's try a more complicated example now. Let's say you have a 2x cubed. 2x cubed differentiated. We're still going to apply the same process, okay? But this time, we'll just keep the 2x as it is. So we'll bring down the power 3, okay? I'm just going to put brackets around this now because we have a 2x still, and then I'm going to take 1 away from the power as I normally would. And you see, with the number in front, and this is why it's important to put the brackets, we can multiply, okay? So to tidy this up, we can get 3 times 2x, so that becomes 6x, and of course the powers, 3 take away 1, is squared. So we end up with 6x squared. Okay, try this question. Try 5x squared. Differentiate this term for me. So bring down the power, keep the 5x, and take 1 away from the power. And so this simplifies to 2 times 5x is of course 10x, and 2 take away 1 is of course 1, which of course is just 10x. Okay, try this question. 4x cubed, differentiate this for me, pause the video. And so we bring down the power, we have 4x, and we take 1 away from the power. And so this simplifies to 3 times 4, of course, is 12, so 12x, and 3 take away 1 is 2, so 12x squared. Okay, so try this one. What if you just have 3x? What would this differentiate to? If you think you have an idea, press pause. Well, here, technically, we have a power of 1. So if we're following our method and our process, of course, we'd bring down that 1, and we'd have 3x, and then we'd have 1 take away 1. Well, 1 times 3, of course, is 3, so we get 3x, and 1 take away 1 is 0. Now, anything to the power of 0, if we remember from our indices, is, of course, 1. So x to the power of 0 is the same as 1. 
So we end up with three times one, which is just three. And three is your answer. So whenever you have something X, your power of X is one, then what you're always going to end up then, of course, is a power of zero, which basically just gets rid of the X term altogether. So whenever you have something X, it will just differentiate to its coefficient. So for example, 5X will straight away differentiate to just 5. 10x will differentiate to just 10. 8x will differentiate to just 8. And so the last type of term you could get, of course, is just a constant on its own. So let's say you have the number 9. And so you have no x term there at all. Technically, I suppose, you could consider it as x to the power of 0 because x to the power of 0 is of course 1. So that is of course the same thing as that. Okay, now I'm just going to give you this as a little background example, all right? A bit like the last one, we'll be able to uh, work with the quick approach with this, but I just want you to understand where it's coming from. Differentiating then this, following our method, of course, if of course the x term isn't there, then obviously it's x to the power of 0. And the minute you bring down the 0 power, and take one away from the power. Well, immediately then we have zero times nine, and of course, zero times anything is zero. So the whole thing will end up being zero. So the quick way to remember it is, if you have a constant on its own, let's do another example, let's say that you have five, the number five. Five will differentiate to zero. Let's say you have the number seven. 7 will differentiate to 0. The number 100 will differentiate to 0. So a constant on its own will always differentiate to 0. And this is why. Okay, so let's try some more examples. So often what you're asked to do is uh, differentiate some functions. So I'm going to go through all the different types of notation then that you could be given. So let's say you are given f of x is equal to x cubed plus 2x squared minus 5x plus 3. All right, now don't worry, we're going to take this one by one uh, nice and slowly. So if you're asked to differentiate this, you might be asked to find f dash x. So watch out for this notation. This notation is asking you basically to differentiate. So what we're going to do is we're going to take each term and we are going to differentiate it. So x cubed, we bring down the power, keep the x, and take one away. So that's going to become 3x squared. 2x squared, well, you're going to bring down the power, keep the 2x, take one away from the power. So that's going to become 4x to the power of 1, which of course is just 4x. Minus 5x, remember what happens if you just have something in front of the x you just keep the coefficient, so minus 5. And 3 is a number on its own, and remember when you differentiate a number, you get 0. So we're left with our final answer, f dash x is 3x squared plus 4x minus 5. Okay, let's try a different example. Let's try y equals 2x cubed minus 3x squared plus 6x minus 10. Okay, so this time you may be asked to find dy dx. And again, this is just notation when you're given the function in this form with a y equals instead of an f of x equals. If they're asking you to differentiate, they're using dy dx. Okay, so off you go. If you're confident, press pause and see how you get on differentiating each of these terms. So we'll bring down the power, keep the 2x, take 1 away from the power, and we end up with 3 times 2 is 6x, 3 take away 1 is of course 2. So 6x squared. Then here, if you have a minus, keep the minus, bring down the power as you normally would, 3x, take 1 away from the power, so I end up with minus 6x to the power of 1, which of course is just 6x. When you have something x, you just keep the coefficient, remember? 
so we end up with just plus 6. And when we have a number on its own, it differentiates, of course, to 0, which therefore gives me a final answer of dy dx is equal to 6x squared minus 6x plus 6. Okay, so try this question. So we're given it in terms of f of x. So if you're asked to differentiate, you might be asked to find f dash x. Okay, so this time we're going to differentiate each of the terms. If you feel confident, press pause and see how you get on. Okay, so again, leave that minus, bring down the power 3 and keep the x. And of course, we'll take 1 away from the power. So minus x cubed becomes minus 3x squared. 4x squared, so again, bring down the power, keep the 4x, and take 1 away from the power. So that becomes 2 times 4, of course, is 8, 8x to the power of 1, which of course is just 8x. Now, minus x, well, the coefficient, remember when you've just got something x, here it doesn't look like I have anything before the x, but of course, technically, it is minus 1x. So differentiating this will just be its coefficient, remember, so it will just be minus 1. And lastly then, minus 2 is a number on its own, and a number on its own differentiates to 0. So we're just left with f dash x is equal to minus 3x squared plus 8x minus 1. Okay, let's try this question. So if you're given it in the form of y equals, you may be asked to find dy dx, okay? And so we will differentiate each of the terms. All right, so this time, just have it in a kind of a different order than we've had before. Normally, we've had the higher powers first, but don't let that throw you. Consider each one term individually. And of course, the first one is a constant on its own. And the way we differentiate a constant is, of course, it differentiates to zero. Minus x, do we remember from the previous one what that gives you? If you just have something x, it just differentiates to its coefficient. Of course, here, the something before the x is technically a minus 1, so that differentiates to minus 1. And 3x squared, bring down the power, keep the 3x, and take 1 away from the power. So we're left with the final answer of minus 1 plus 6x and 2 take away 1 is 1, so we can write it as just 6x.